So welcome to the Chaos Common Metrics Working Group meeting for June 24th. I will share my screen with the agenda so that you can see it. Um, how's that? Everybody see an agenda? Looks good to me. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, all right, let me just move some windows around. Okay, so we have we have a few things on the agenda. And I moved the focus area reevaluation up to the top of the agenda because um, it's something that we keep talking about how we need to talk about, and then we never actually talk about it because we get sucked into the metrics. So I moved it to the top to make sure we talk about it and give it whatever attention it needs, and then we can move on to the stuff that we do um, kind of every every week. So I did also pull up the focus areas so we could see what they are. And then um, I think, who put this on the agenda originally? Matt G, was that you? It might have been. I think it was, yeah, it was. And it was okay. the... It came up yesterday, basically. But, again. No, the original comment was just asking the working groups just to reflect on their focus areas. It's not that they're bad or anything like that. <laughs> just to just... And So that, because we made up a lot of these things years ago. Mm -hmm. and just making sure that we do. And I, I know that Common has done this in the past, so that's all. No, that makes total sense. Um, I should also mention that I need to leave. Um, I have another meeting that starts at a quarter till, so I need to leave just before that. Um, so I just, wanted to, I just wanted to mention that. So somebody else. No, no last problem. No, apparently no from Sean. No, no. no you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's certainly okay to not go the whole 50 minutes as well. So. That's also true. Well, the last one was super efficient and we didn't take very much time at all. Um, I think, Sean, you weren't here for that one. I, I wasn't. I believe I was. <laughs> he was dropping a hint. No, there was that. I had some conflict. I don't even remember what it was. Hope you're not following. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. See, the implication was that when Sean's not here, we finish really early, but Sean doesn't know that because it's. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Probably also fair. Um, okay, so any any thoughts on, does anybody have any thoughts on the, the focus areas? Do people think that these are the right ones, the wrong ones? What do we, what do we think? I don't think they're wrong. I think, I mean, these are the things that are common that don't always fit in one working group. <laughs> so I like the who, what, where, when. Um, we have also um, on the chaos metric spreadsheet, we have like longer, uh, I guess we have longer names for them, who people, what contribution, when time and where space. And I like that even more. I see that. Yeah, the spreadsheet does. Yeah, I remember we did that on the spreadsheet because we kept getting confused about what they meant. Um, which probably means that it might be worth doing a refresh and um, you know, either either retitling the, the focus areas themselves to have that additional context or um, maybe adding adding some more to the to the goal. I, I actually I like what's in the uh, spreadsheet just like okay. you know what colon contribution I think that's cool. Um, does somebody want to volunteer to do a PR with those changes? I'll do that right now. That will take like two seconds. Okay. Um, I know I have an outstanding PR on my to-do list. I'll, I'll just admit it didn't get done okay. yet, yet, but I had every intention of doing it this morning. <laughs> no worries. We'll get to that in the action items section. Okay. All right. Um, Anybody else have any thoughts on the, before we, I don't want to move out of the focus area discussion too quickly. Just one, I do have one comment. So like in that table that you're showing Don, it's pretty easy obviously to add it to the table, but like the folder names, see above, mm -hmm. like how far should I take that? I wouldn't change the folder names. Okay. Um, just kind of, just maybe just this table then. Yeah, but the other place where this has um, implications, I see Kevin here. I was just scrolling around to see who was here. Um, is in the release if we rename some of the of the focus areas. 
because I think those I'm not sure Kevin how this impacts the stuff that you do with the release uh it it does impact it and unfortunately it's not really described in the uh the release process on what to do here so at this point it's uh if changes like this are made uh you probably just need to let me know uh and I'm sorry I, I came in late what was the was the discussion to change the name of the focus areas? Uh, yes, the, the discussion here, and I'll click on the metric spreadsheet so that we can all look at that together, um, was that in the spreadsheet, we actually have the, the focus areas um, slightly differently articulated. So who is obviously people, what is the contribution, um, when is related to time and where is related to space. So the proposal was to actually make those the titles of the focus areas because that seemed to resonate better with people and it seemed to make more sense. Oh, so time, time and space? Uh, basically putting the, the colon, colon space, colon time, colon contribution, colon people as the names of the focus areas. Oh, okay. So the, the full, the who, colon people. Yeah, because okay. here we just have we just have this, and I don't know if you remember back back when we at one point we we had a bunch of discussions where we we kept confusing ourselves about which things belonged in which metric, yeah. and we added that to the spreadsheet so that we could remember exactly what those were focused on, but we never actually um, populated it here, which I think is probably a good idea. I'm wondering if uh, if even removing the what, when, where, and who would be appropriate. If the, if that follow-up text is, is telling us what we need to know and it, it's clear, do we need that first part? What do people think? Sorry to take you off your conversation. No, that's cool. That's, that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah, sure, we're gonna say something. Yeah, so regarding the goal, we have two places. Uh, one is which we are seeing on the screen mm -hmm. and the other is listed in the subfolder of the focus area. For example, if you open bot, bot uh, in the readme, you'll find that the goal is different. So which one is the final one? I mean, let's, this is a slightly different conversation, I think. To, let's have that just in a second. <laughs> That's a really good point, Yash. Okay, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on the what, when, where, who versus people, contribution, time, and space? Uh, I like the Kevin's idea. If all our questions are related, who, uh, like what we are trying to goal question metric, and if all our questions are who, then we should have a who. If all, not all our questions are based on who, then we should keep it as a people. Maybe we can look at a couple of metrics. Are these all the questions related to who? It'll help us determine whether we should keep who as a, and then people or just people. Oops, Kevin, you're on mute. So I think who and people are the same thing, right? So who, who describes people within the project, All right? So if they both describe the same thing, do we need both terms? To me, people is the clearer of the terms. And the, the reason that people was tacked on is because it, it provided some explanation of what we meant by who. If we remove who from the, from the name, do we still understand what this focus area is? I feel like I do, but maybe, would it be clear to everyone else? I, I put a comment in the chat. So if you look at the contributor location within uh, who met, uh, who working group, uh, the question is what is the location of contribution rather than who is the contributor? So maybe then we need to think and revise the grouping of the metrics within the focus area because like, Focus area is telling me to look at the contributors, uh, but the metric itself is asking me to look at the location. 
who if, in, in the spreadsheet we are talking about who as a people but uh, in the who uh, country uh, we have a metric which is contributor location which is not about who uh, people rather it's more about the location So it sounds like based on what I'm seeing in the chat and what people are saying that there's um, a fair bit of support for uh, just getting rid of the who, what, when, where and going with people, contribution, time and what was the other one? Space. Um, I feel like space Ge needs a little more uh, elaboration is the, the only one. Space is geographic location when I think of it. Is that what we mean? No. Um, okay, let's <laughs> see. What about it's platform? where the collaboration happens or, you know, so like collaboration, if you look at the, it's a collaboration platforms where something's released, where the infrastructure is hosted. We, we could call it collaboration space. Um, That one seems to be the more, um, I guess, ambiguous one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like it's like all about the context in which the work is done. Is there a better way we can? This is the same one we struggled with. If you guys remember back to the DEI conversation, um, where we struggled with, I think at one point it was called places. Small um, project places. Yeah, and so it's it's something that's hard because it's it's a mix of yeah. It's a mix of online, like virtual stuff. It's a mix of like event locations. I'm guessing yeah. kind of physical, physical yeah, and kind of, virtual spaces. Something yeah, like it's like places where things happen. Magic but I don't know. That. Row forty three. <laughs> Yeah, I love to comment on that. It, it starts with who, and, and some of them start with where, too. So I was a little confused. <laughs> I, uh, I know, I, I remember that one completely, and I, I know you put that one in there, Matt. Uh, German, right? I did? Yep, that was you. All right. All right. Well, let's just call row 38 miscellany. <laughs> Well, that's the um, comment of comments. What about what about location? Just like not necessarily specifying geographic location or internet location, but just location. What did we eventually call this in DEI? Project and community, I think. Yeah, just click on the DEI tab. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Excellent point. There it is. It's gonna be right here. Um, project and community. Yeah. Document, chat platform inclusivity, code of conduct. I feel like that's, those, those are those are different things though. It's, um, but we had a similar issue naming it because of, yeah. Um, I, I am excited for that moment where uh, two working groups have the same focus area. I think that would, I'm, I'm excited for that to happen. <laughs> I mean, do we think that place is a better word for this? I like place. I play. Has anybody been taking notes? Because I've a little bit. Um, somebody could take notes. That'd be awesome. Because I can't do that and talk at the same time. I can jot down some of these things. Okay, so it sounds like it sounds like we're gonna go with um, people, contribution, time, and place. Um, in that case, Matt, I, I take it back, and I do think we probably need to rename the folders too. Um, so that's gonna be a bigger a bigger issue. Are there any more uh, comments about the the names or any concerns about? Uh, what we just kind of decided 
TP uh, suggestion is a next step is we have to relook the uh, metrics within the focus area whether they truly belong to that or not they need to be relocated to the focus area like other focus groups. Um, yeah, we can do that. I'm probably not as a, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm assuming that regardless of the rename, they, they should be in the right categories. Um, I would say if you see one that you think is not in the right focus area after we've renamed it, um, let's file an issue and, and talk about it in the next meeting. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, any more on the titles? before we move off to Yasha's question about uh, inconsistent goals. Um, okay, so, so Yash brings up an excellent point in that um, our goals are not consistent across uh, these different areas. So we have, let me see what we have on the readme. Um, <laughs> that's even different. <laughs> um, so we have a bit of a mess, I guess we have, we have different, uh, different things depending on where we look at it. Um, I suspect that actually, uh, I don't understand. Okay, I think maybe maybe it's not three. I think maybe that when the README was redone that we pulled it from the uh, the README page of the focus area itself, which is not the same as what we have here. So um, I like I like this page. Um, the the goals on this page are really good. The only problem I had with them before was that each page each goal um, used the name of the focus area in the goal, uh, like identify what contributions, identify when contributions. But like that's gone now. And now that we're changing the names, so I like this page. The goals in this page it provides a lot of context. point let me let's look at it just let's just comp, let's just compare one so this is to look at the let's look at the who for just a second understand organizational and personal engagement with open source projects and then here we have identify metrics about individuals or organizations who made contributions So to Matt's point, maybe as we're renaming the focus area, how like who becomes people, then this focus area, the goal could just be written starting with who? You know what I mean? So like the what goal, the current focus area that is what has what in the goal, the word what. Mm -hmm. And the where focus area has where in the goal. So maybe the who focus area, we could rename it people. And then the goal is to understand or identify who is making contributions to an open source project. I don't under I don't understand. Sorry. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. That. So as we so right now, Matt had said that the focus area where before we've renamed anything the focus area where the goal contains the word where so he's like that was a bit redundant but by renaming where to whatever we we're renaming it to the goal becomes quite nice because it's paired with a different word okay so you're saying that um I thought you were saying the opposite of what I had thought Matt said um but I was just misunderstanding um so you're like I agree with Matt and then I'm gonna I or something else, but it's not. I was just misunderstanding. Sorry. Um, so I think you're both saying that you prefer these goals to the. We do. And then on the who goal, we could probably rewrite that to include the word, but it has who, I guess, in it somewhere. It yeah. So, so then it's good. 
Okay. So, Does that um, mean... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I, I recommend that we do some work in this meeting too. The to, to like I've put the focus areas in here. I feel like they could use some suggestions too. Uh, like there's some things that could be rewritten about them. So I don't we just like sorry, I'm totally taking over here. But I no. I, I want to recommend that That's we okay. um, that we work on um just doing a little bit of editing on the focus area like in the in the meeting so that we can have that to put back in the repo. Cool. So we'll do it uh, right here in the notes, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. my recommendation was. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to just totally take over there, but. No, you're you are absolutely welcome to take over um, because that is an excellent suggestion. Uh, no, I like that. I like that idea a lot. Um, do we want to take this one at a time? Do we want to just like everybody kind of look at them and edit as as needed? Why don't we, why don't we take the, uh, dive. go ahead. I'm a little confused about the scope of place. So the way, the way that's written, where in the project contributions occurred, and then the examples are GitHub documentation. Uh, so are, are we talking about the way it's written, it kind of, it feels like a kind of a weird mix between, it is a, a place or a space, but it's also a type of contribution. And then it gets a little confused with the, uh, when we talk about people, like location is one of the things that we, one of the examples we give in descriptions of people. Right, so for- Is it artifact type? For place, what are we what are we actually trying to to look at here? I heard you say something like artifact type. Yeah, I mean it it in doc documentation is kind of a, a type of contribution, right? But then we also have GitHub, which is the collaboration platform. Uh, so it's identify where project con I'm just I'm I'm not sure I understand the scope. Of mm -hmm. place. I think documentation is a bad example for. Um, Maybe. Okay, so that, that's that's more clear now. And then I see someone removed location from the people as well. Which then to Vinod's point, there is a there is a metric within that people that we would probably need to move into uh, place. Uh, contributor location. Yeah. But that's an attribute of people. So it's not, it's it's more like it, because you're talking about a specific contributors look or specific contributors locations, we're not talking about location in general, which is what the place um, ones are supposed to be. So this is an attribute of people. So I think it has to stay in the people one. And people's almost like another layer down. But it, it could be the same thing, right? So contributor location and contribution location uh, could be the same thing. Whereas contributor location would fit in people and contribution location is basically the description of place, right? Yeah, but I don't think you can, I don't think you decouple the contributor from the contribution, do you? I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm comfortable leaving it in people. I'm just. I'm just trying to understand the scope of each focus area. Yeah. I mean, I think it's because because we're talking about the location of a specific person. It's really more of a demographics metric about people, because you would have. Um, so the, the thing about people is that they can have all of the attributes that fit in any of these categories, right? Because you're talking about a person, so they have. You know, what's where? When was their first contribution? Um, that that's arguably kind of a time, but because it's tied to the person, 
So like when we're talking about general time metrics, those, those go in time, but if we're talking about anything that's an attribute of a person, I think it has to stay in people. Okay. So it's really like the, the details about uh, how people contribute is uh, how, how pe the people themselves. I don't, under, I don't quite understand the, um, the value of measuring the people versus the contributions unless they're tied together somehow. I don't know how to say that. I, I think the reason we did it is because we want to aggregate sometimes, you know, without regard to the person and just the, the, the contribution. And sometimes we want to aggregate by category of person. I think that's why we decided to make them different initially. Okay, that makes sense. Just reading at this contributor location metric, it is just asking like, what is the location of the contributor? And more interested, not even if I'm not sure, is it an attribute or it's just, a, yeah, maybe it is an attribute. Yeah, I agree with Don. It's it's demographic, it's demographic data, which definitely, which definitely fits with with people. Yes, yes. Now it makes sense. But if we if we are adding demographic. Uh, data in there, we probably need to have some connection to uh, the DEI working group and also the, the demographics project, uh, either, either some linking or uh, when, we're, when we're creating these metrics, we need to have, I think we need to add some consideration there because I think the, the, the people focus area is going to have some overlap with DEI and I, I think that's fine. We just need to make sure we're we're linking to the DEI stuff. Yeah, I'd hold out for uh, the next cast weekly. I'm going to be bringing up that idea to the intersectional metric. It's it's my new uh, my new pitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about it, about metrics that can be across different fo uh, focus areas and different types uh, yeah. of working group. And I, and I I think we have evolved to this matrix idea that I suggested before that there are metrics that apply across multiple working groups. Um, and I think, I think this is the purpose of common to define these things that really every group wants these things answered or have their, to have their metrics uh, sliced along a lot of the metrics that we're creating. Well, since, since everyone else is mentioning that they've brought this up in the past, I will mention that I've brought this up in the past as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's why common exists. Like we all thought we should do this. It's one of those things that that's super hard. So it keeps coming up and we've not, not quite figured out what to do with it. Um, but to, to everyone's point, it's important. I think we need to figure it out. It almost sounds like a, like an internship it would be dedicated to something like this. It sounds like a lot of work, but yeah. I think at the, at the, I think one of the one of the first places we can look at this is with the uh, the way that we categorize and display the metrics, and and that's kind of how I've talked about it in the past. So right right now we categorize and display the metrics based on focus areas and working groups, uh, or specifically working groups and then focus areas. But are is it is it best to display and present these metrics by working groups, or is it better to categorize them in some other fashion. And when we start categorizing them in some other, some other fashion, then what you're going to see is common metrics are going to mix with DEI metrics and, and so on and so forth. So the, the categorization is the, is the question in my mind. So how do we, how, what's a good way to categorize and present these metrics? Or what are a bunch of different good ways to do it? All right, so we're probably not going to solve that one here. So let's let's see if we can nail down these definitions. Uh, sorry, the the goals for each focus area. Um, I'm just going to go through and accept all the suggestions, and then we can continue to edit them as needed. Um,
I think it's the most dense editing I've ever seen in the Chaos Project. I'm really proud of everyone. Focused. Lots of suggestions here. Look at this. Um, So we need to get the word who back in that one. We seem to, we've lost who. I always struggle with using who and organizations, but that's just me. That's that organizations are not people. <laughs> thing. Organization is a collection of people, a representing collection of people. It's okay. That's just my my own personal thing. Here, this will make it sound a little bit better. Whoops. Um, I know it doesn't change it grammatically, but it'll sound better. I get it. It associates who with individuals a little bit yeah, more closely. A little more. I like it. Um. Okay. So. Any more, any other thoughts on the goals? Are, are people okay with these? Yeah, I can start out. I'll, I'll do kind of a series of pull requests and I won't do just one. Well, how would you prefer to see it? Do you want just one giant PR that touches a bunch of files or do you want it file by file? Uh, I think we should do one, as much as I hate one giant PR with all the things, um, I think that'll help tie tie this together. Otherwise, it'll look like, why are we doing it just for certain? I'll do that. Certain one. Cool. And I'll probably do the, the folders. Um, I don't think that should affect things, should it? Isn't GitHub getting better with like renaming folders and the yeah, naming effects they, of that? They are. OK. Uh, worst case, it could break break some links. Um, It'll break everything on the website. Yeah, that was so, a lot uh, of the process. <laughs> <laughs> because that website is pulling all the data from the GitHub. So. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so do it, but do it, but do it anyway, and then let me know, and I'll fix it. <laughs> all right. Okay, you can assign that PR to Kevin and we won't merge it until Kevin is okay with it. And maybe Kevin can just merge it at the same time that you make the website fixes so that everything's coordinated. So I am going to, I'm gonna create a, an issue for the uh, focus area rename as well uh, for, uh, and tag it as metrics release. Uh, because it will, it will require editing uh, on the website as well. Okay. Well, I'm glad I put this at the top of the agenda because as I suspected, this uh, discussion always takes more time than we think it's going to take. Um, but this was good. I'm glad we had this discussion because I feel like we've got, I feel like we have better names for the focus areas and I feel like we have better goals around them for sure. So um, now I'm gonna have to leave in about five or six minutes so that I can just have like a three minute break between meetings. Um, does somebody else want to just take over from here? And yeah, I can. I can do that. You can take off now too, if you want to <laughs> have more time, that's okay. <laughs> I'm kicking you out, but just letting you know. Well, get rid of Dawn. We can make some real progress after she leaves. No, it's Sean, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, does this resolve Yasha's concern? Because if I go ahead and change everything across the entire like repo, I think this should resolve Yasha's issue. Okay. I hope you won't be touching the metric files. I don't think the metrics need to be touched. I don't think the metrics will be changed. Just the, it looks like, I think it's just the readme's across the variety of places. 
because in the March project, we are going to be sending out some PRs to the common working group regarding the structuring of the metric. So I was just confirming that there shouldn't be any merge conflicts. No, I don't think so. Thanks. All right. Well, um, we can review, we're moving down the list here. We can review action items from the prior meetings. So if we come down, let me share my screen. I did helpfully include the action items in the agenda. Oh, you so did? You okay. Don't scroll cool. down too far. Oh, wait, here? Yeah. Discussion of work in progress mission. These are all the action items. Yeah, I think so. These these okay. the AIs where it says AI. Okay. Um, oh, gotcha. Okay, so Sean, I'm guessing Mexico action items. <laughs> Am I right? I think Sean's gone, but he oh, said. What? He okay, well then. Yeah, I'm... he's gone. Um, he said he didn't get it done, so I'm, I, okay. I, that's why he just left. Okay, well, I actually did something on bot activity. So why don't, so this one right here. So if you could kind of click that link. Here's the bot activity metric. So we had talked about bot activity with respect to human activity as well, like a ratio of the two. And I think we just landed on bot activity. Somebody else had put a title in there of Bots and happiness. I have no, no recollection of who included this or why. Do we do we need more happiness metrics? I think we might. <laughs> okay. is, that focus, is that a focus area? I just don't know what it is. <laughs> Especially in the pandemics. Um, so let me. I've been getting rid of these. So. Just so there is, I just wanted to point out there is in in uh, dev stats. It's, it's not real easy to read here, but in dev stats, they do actually track bot activity across their repositories, just straight bot activity. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so I think this is something we can certainly include here. I don't know of any other tools that do bot activity tracking. I would assume Augur could do it and I would assume Grimoire Lab could do it as well but I don't know if they're doing it right now. Um, so and then the objectives just kind of I was reflecting on why we would even have this metric in the first place. So you know I was trying to think of it, it can I think it can serve as a proxy for a number of different things. So I think in Kubernetes, Don correct me, you're still on, but isn't there a, a contributor agreement bot? Like before you can issue a pull request, you have to sign. Yeah, there's a, there's a CLA bot that checks the contributor license agreement. Yeah, so I mean, I think taking a look at that particular bot activity increase could tell you a little bit, of, tell you a little bit about how many new um, CLAs are actually being signed within the community and people trying to make pull requests. So I think that's interesting. Um, I don't know if there's other bots that might be signals of something else, you know, like a proxy for some other kind of activity or growth within the community. The CLA one seemed to stand out to me. So if you think of something else, maybe over time, how, how bot activity could be a proxy for human activity. Um, certainly providing a filter on some other sets of metrics. So like a filter, we had talked about time, remember time to first response. That's a metric. Does anybody remember this? As everybody's leaving, we'll still, I'll just finish out a few thoughts here, but um, that obviously the time to first response metric is going to be skewed from rapid bot activity. Right, so it's kind of like the badging program looks amazing from time to first response for an issue <laughs> based on the bot activity, <laughs> which is great. Um, but we might want to 
to encourage people to think about bot activity as a filter. Um, are there any other kind of objectives as to why we might want to look at bots or ones that you would want to draw forward? I feel like this list is pretty good. Uh, the one that the one that I was going to bring up is the is that bottom one uh, that you've already added. So uh, I think that's that's actually a really big that one's a really big deal. I think because bots okay. bots are often they're often used as uh, to uh, to give privileges where where admin privileges uh, uh, wouldn't normally exist. So okay. Uh the one point you mentioned is like a comparison of what to the human activities, which I don't see in the objectives. I've, really. I've removed that. So this is, we had two metrics in okay. here. We had bot activity, which is what I'm working on right now. And then okay. the other is a ratio of human to bot activity. Oh, okay. Then it makes sense. Otherwise, I was like, you mentioned about the comparison, but I don't see it in this metric. That's where I was. Yeah, I tried to pull it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then it honest, makes sense. Honestly, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know that we would need two separate metrics for it. Really, uh, if we if we wanted to address the ratio bit, we could just add it in the implementation section somewhere. Sure. Where, yeah. like, hey, one of the ways that we can look at this is the ratio of human to bots. Uh, <laughs> I That's don't uh, because it, this has been looked in a couple of different ways. Like ratio is the one of the things they measure or look at the bot to human activity ratio. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of connecting specific methods to metrics. That's fine. I I yeah. tend to prefer that the metrics are kind of general and general or high level, and we can give some implementation advice, uh, but. Like so, attaching specific methods to to metrics, I think becomes it becomes a little problematic. Like, do we need a do we need to have like a, a median median number of bots or a average number of bots? You know, when we when we start uh, when we start doing that, then there's there's just a bunch of different quantitative methods to 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 basically do to measure this bot activity. And what we're really talking about is like bot activity. And then if you want to look at bot activity, you could do it in these ways. So sorry. what we probably also need to define what we consider a bot. Sorry to be that guy, but um, like, do we consider DCO? Cause it, it, it hooks into the GitHub issue. Does is that considered a bot or is it like some kind of checking tool? Like is at that point is Travis a bot? I'm not sure. That's a, that's a good point. So uh, yeah. on GitHub, there is there is a a slight difference between automated tasks and bots. And in the in the GitHub example, a bot is actually a contributor, right? So this is they've actually made the bot a contributor. So there's an entity there, and that's separate from uh, uh, you can you can automate tasks with other pieces of software. But but a bot has kind of a a contributor instantiation that that then does these tasks as a, as not, a contributor, right? Not always, though. Like the CLA bot doesn't contribute. At that point, we need to de we don't need to define the bots ourselves, but we, we can say that the lines are blurred and it can be hard to determine what's a bot and what's not, and you have to decide for yourself. Kind of like the the neutral stance of chaos in general. Is the do they refer to the CLA as a bot or is that just an automated task? Well, that is if it, it responds in the issue, it's definitely a bot or the PR. So why? How is that not? I mean, if we're keeping it general, why is that sentence not appropriate? No, that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, it makes sense. I think it's just good to, to have some kind of way of saying either what this is what we define as a bot in this metric or to say, um, we're not going to define a bot for you, but you can decide what you think is a bot or something like that. Maybe in, in more um, soft terms, but.
All right. I did have one question. So this one right here, Kevin, you kind of alluded to this and Vinod, you brought it up. So the ratio of bot to human activity, why, why does this matter? So many times project looked at like, uh, who are our main contributors? And then this bot activity comes out in front and they want to show you know, the major contributors and that needs to be filtered it out. Even if that's, not a, that's not a ratio. Yeah, uh, but at times they also compare it with the bot. I've seen it being used, but I don't exactly remember where it was used. I don't recall that uh, task, but I've seen it used. That's where it just popped in my mind that people are uh, people do compare like who is the major contributor and what is the ratio of what uh, like whether our project is highly automated or there is a human aspect to it is the thing that has better. Yeah, it could indicate project maturity. Uh, but honestly, it's it's not something I would be interested in knowing. Uh, I only brought it up because it was the it's the other it's that other metric that uh, that had been okay uh, that had been put forward right so and it and it and it is specifically it's a it's a it's a method right it's a it's a kind of a a so, way of looking yeah, at bot yeah. activity right you you could say you could say the, the same thing you could say the the average number of bots is the same thing to me as as the ratio of bot to human activity, right? Yeah. So it's a method of measurement or analysis. Right? I feel like it's it's really um, dependent on the project and, and definitely the language, the size of the project, the style of the project. But if you measure it against your own project, I feel like time series would be useful there. Yeah, then it's very much about maturity. Okay, we're at 10.50. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. I'll see some of you a little later this afternoon. See ya. Bye.